Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled mother thinks her son should be able to molest teenage girls. First of all, backstory. Today, it snowed quite a bit in my city. I'm in the Pacific Northwest, so we don't usually get a lot of snow, but when we do, it's very wet, slushy, slippery, and heavy. This makes shoveling driveways a total nightmare. I live pretty high on a mountain, so we get the worst of it. I'm in my early 20s and still live with my parents, but they're out of town at the moment. Usually when it snows, my parents and I will get up early and shovel the driveway together because it's at the very least 200 square feet and at a really sharp incline. Basically a death trap if it's not completely cleared and salted. But because I'm alone, it was just me today. I wasn't exactly thrilled when I got out there because I realized just how heavy the snow was and I'm a pretty small girl with zero upper body strength. I could only push about three feet at a time before it got too heavy for me. So I was out there for well over an hour, working at it in small increments, slipping all over the place and sweating like crazy. Definitely needed a shower before work, lol. I've also been having bad asthma attacks from the cold weather recently and I'm recovering from a gnarly leg injury. So I really shouldn't have been doing it, but I really needed to get to work and buses don't come anywhere near my house. Didn't have much of a choice. Okay, now for the actual story. I was finally at the bottom of my driveway clearing the last little bit away and couldn't wait to get inside and jump in the shower. Enter Entitled Mother. She's the mom of the family who moved in next door back in the summer, but they've never really acknowledged me when I've tried to say hello or wave. Kind of rude and unusual in my neck of the woods. But they're from Hollywood. I think the husband's an affluent film guy, so maybe the culture's different. Anyway, she sees me finishing up and is suddenly very friendly. Hi, good morning. Wow, you're really good at that. Me, a little taken aback. Oh, hey, not really, but someone's gotta do it. You did such a good job. Can you do mine next? I thought she was joking, so I laughed and said, I would, but after that ordeal, I think I'm spent. But no, she just looked at me expectantly and started explaining why I should do it. Come on, my driveway's nowhere near as big as yours. It'll take you 15 minutes tops, plus you're already dressed for the weather. We don't have a shovel. I don't exactly have 15 minutes. I need to get ready for work and I'm already behind schedule. But you guys are more than welcome to borrow our shovels. We have four. It's not my fault you're behind schedule. You should have woken up earlier. And you're not the only one who has somewhere to be this morning. My little boy does too. I woke up pretty early. It just took way longer than I expected. And again, if you guys have somewhere to be, feel free to borrow our shovels. You're being incredibly selfish. My son has to go to work too, and he'll need to get out of the driveway just like you. If you don't clear our driveway, he could get into an accident and be hurt. And it'll be your fault. Oh, I didn't know your son was grown. Where is he? He's asleep. He was up late last night and needs his rest. He's very smart and his job is definitely more demanding than yours. Oh, okay. Well, when he wakes up, tell him he can borrow our shovels. They're by the shed. No, you have to do it. He doesn't know how. I promise it's not that hard to figure out. If he's as smart as you say he is, he'll be fine. Or you could do it. How dare you? I then walked back up my driveway out of her sight because I didn't have time or energy for her garbage. But I could hear her yelling expletives at me and threatening to tell my dad how bratty I am. My dad effing hates her. Can't wait to tell him the story when he gets back. As this lady was arguing with OP, I was imagining her son was like 8 years old or something. But he's a grown adult and he apparently needs a girl to shovel his driveway for him? Oh my god, this whole family is entitled. Our next Reddit post is from Flying Donkey Dong. I'm currently taking classes away from home, and since I don't like the idea of living out of my car, I rented a room at a nearby bin breakfast that houses students. Great owners, amazing rooms with private bathrooms, fast Wi-Fi, free use of state-of-the-art kitchen, and above all else, affordable. Of course, because the place I'm staying at is a bed and breakfast first, the owners request that I stay flexible during tourist seasons, which means I keep things at a ready-to-move status. Tourist patrons pay way more to stay here, so they take priority over room choice. 
Thankfully, tourist season only lasts from September 1st to October 22nd, and from February 1st to the 18th, and doesn't come without compensation. The owners have temporary rooms in their private residence. They call it the retreat, set up for students who have to move for tourists, as well as a contract stating that if any items left in our room are damaged or stolen by tourists, it'll be fixed or replaced. Well, it's tourist season again, thanks to the nearby town's winter and Valentine's festivals that happen every February. I've been moved once so far, but it wasn't too bad. The owner called all the students into the common room to explain the room situation for the coming days. Alrighty then, housemate one and two, you're gonna stay the night up at the retreat. OP, you're the lucky one who gets to stay this time. Mind your manners and just do what you do. Later that day, I'm playing on my Xbox when I'm caught off guard as my door swings open and a family of three pour in. The father sets down a couple of luggage bags while the kid starts running around the room. The mother takes one look at me and says, I was told that you'd be moved out by now. Why are you still here? I politely tell her that they may have the wrong room and that mine wasn't selected for patron use. That's ridiculous. I specifically requested this room. You better leave now or I'll be having a strongly worded conversation with the owner. I ask her to give me a second as I call up the owner. She gives me a humph, whatever. The owner picks up and I double check with him about my room. He confirms that they have the wrong room and that he'll be there shortly to work it out. I relay this information to the mother who just doesn't accept this. This is stupid. I asked for this room and I paid the fee so you've got to leave now. The kid finally notices my Xbox. Awesome. We have an Xbox while we stay here. Can I play it mom? Please. The mom agrees, totally ignoring the fact that she has no right to allow her child to use someone else's things. I keep the controller away from the kid and say that if I'm leaving, I'll be taking my Xbox with me. Her brat did not like that answer and began to wail like a banshee. Now look what you've done. You've made my baby cry. He's gonna be in a bad mood for the rest of our stay now. You better hope the owner is forgiving cause he's getting an earful when he shows up. All this is going on and not a word has been breathed from the dad. He just stands behind his wife, arms crossed and with a mildly discomforted look on his face. The owner finally shows up and it goes like this. Hello folks, sorry for the mix up, your room is taken up by this punk, we know. But this is the room I asked for and it's the room we're getting or we'll find somewhere else. Ma'am, your bill states that you asked for room 4. This is room 5. I've already made the arrangements for room 4 to be used, so if you could please just follow me, we'll get your family set up. No, this room has an Xbox video game entertainer. Yes, she called it that. And my son wants to use it while we stay here. It's this room or nothing. You'll be hard pressed to find another place with vacancy during the festival. Besides, it's just down the hall and it's just as nice as this room. Does it have an Xbox? I don't think. Then it's this room or we'll take the Xbox with us. I interject, saying that no one is taking or using my Xbox without my permission. Why do you even have that thing anyways? You look like an adult, act like one, and quit playing childish video games. Ma'am, it's room four or nothing, and I can assure you it's not going to be easy to find a new place to stay. Even if you did, it won't be as nice as here. Fine, I'll take it, but don't expect to review over three stars. She stomps out of the room, wailing Brad and pack mule husband in tow. The owner gives me a yeesh look before apologizing and closing the door. That was two days ago, and they're still down the hall for me for another two days. The kid has had at least four audible temper tantrums since then. God have mercy. Man, the fact that the father didn't say anything makes me think that he's completely used to it and that this must happen all the time. And where does this lady get off telling OP that he's being childish? This lady was acting more spoiled and entitled than the actual child in the room. Our next Reddit post is from Lovely Lil Bit. Recently, I was called to go to my sister's school because apparently some kid grabbed her butt and she slapped him. I arrive at the school and the kid and my sister are already there. The kid's mom arrives soon after and she started scolding my sister for hitting her son. I told her that her kid has no business touching my sister and that he deserved it. 
She then rants on and on about how her kid doesn't know any better. He's 15 to 16. I then tell her that if he doesn't know any better, then she's failed as a parent. The principal then says that his behavior will not be tolerated and that he's getting expelled as he's done this to several different girls. What a terrible parent. If your 16-year-old son doesn't know that it's not okay to sexually assault women, then you've failed as a human being. Learning to keep your hands to yourself is a skill you learn in freaking kindergarten. Our next Reddit post is from White on Myoji. My mom and I immigrated to the US when I was seven, and for the first three months we were here, we lived with a relative of my mom's who immigrated a few years before us. The dad helped my dad going to interviews, walked him through buying a car, and helped us find our bearings in the US. My family and I are Buddhist, and this family are solidly fundamentalist Christians. While we lived with them, they strongly encouraged us to go to church with them every Sunday. And when my family found a temple and started attending that temple, they started treating us like garbage. Their sons would pick on me and make fun of my English and told me I won't go to college and probably just end up being a repairman. The mom and their daughter would make fun of my sister for her rapid weight loss and gains. When we found out later this was due to lupus and she had to be hospitalized, they told my mom that the reason my sister is sick is because we worship demons. About 15 years ago, the dad lost his job. My parents, who were now doing well, needed to retile the house and hired the dad to do it. And when I asked how much they were charged, I was floored thinking they miscalculated. I told them that they were overpaying, but my dad just said we're paying them back. This happened again. Every home improvement project my dad did, he would always hire the dad and would always be overcharged. The sucky thing is, the work was beyond subpar, like the retiling work. I had to regrout the entire job when I visited one holiday. On top of this, they would always ask to borrow money and never paid my dad back. At this point, I figured my parents paid them back and then some. Frankly, I was completely done with them when I heard what they said about my sister. One day, I get a wedding invitation. Their middle-aged son is getting married. Not wanting to have anything to do with them, I RSVP no. About a month later, I got a call from their mom asking why I haven't sent a gift yet. She demanded I send a gift despite my protests I'm not obligated to. Then she mentioned how my family owed them and she knew I can afford to send gifts because I had a well-paying job and how she always prayed for us to be saved. When she said this, it triggered the wheels of my brain to turn and I told her, she's right, I was being rude and I'll send a gift. When I hung up, I immediately looked up every Buddhist, Muslim, Hindu, Jewish, Jain, Sikh, Zoroastrian houses of worship in the area and made a donation in the happy couple's name. Then, I also donated to the Satanic Temple and bought the entire family membership cards and certificates to the Satanic Temple. About two to three weeks later, I got a call again from the mom. I answered as politely as I can. Oh, hi, did you enjoy the gift? This was met with a barrage of yelling, screeching, and a torrent of insults. I was barely able to make anything out. The daughter called my sister and the middle son called me later, demanding an explanation. I flat out told him everything and was 100% not apologetic about it. Actually, I did say I was sorry for not being there to see the whole thing go down. When I spoke to my sister later, this is what we're able to piece together. They had the wedding shower at their church after services and they were opening their gifts then. Well, they got to my gift. Everyone was uncomfortable seeing all the donations to the houses of worship with definitely non-Christian names made in the couple's names. Then the bride's parents flipped out when they saw the membership cards and certificates with the family's name on it, and they freaked out even more when they saw the bride's membership card. The bride's parents demanded she break off the engagement, and she did. Everyone in their church apparently thinks this whole family are Satanists trying to corrupt their church, and they're treated as pariahs in their church. Now people are telling them they're going to hell. I ran into the mom and dad a few weeks ago at the market, and I looked at them and gave them the Hail Satan hand gesture. They scurried away from me. Was I a butthole for doing it? Yeah, no debate there. But I figure, with how much I donated, I don't think anyone can call me ungrateful or say it's a cheap wedding gift. But really, I am sorry. I wasn't there to see the whole thing go down. This is perfect karma. 
It's a family of sanctimonious, judgy, entitled people who look down on other people for their beliefs. And now, everyone in their community who they cared about looks down on them for their beliefs. That was r slash Entitled Parents, and if you like this video, then hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.